My name's Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and I'm gonna show you how I add drop shadows and my strategy to keep them minimal and clean. So here we are in Photoshop. I've opened up a new document, a new document of any type. We're gonna talk about drop shadows. I'm gonna show you how to add a drop shadow. I'm gonna show you how to do the thumbnail, and then I'm gonna show you how, uh, how or talk about my strategies with drop shadows. So first off, let's add some elements. We're gonna add some, uh, just some shapes over here with the shape tool. I'm gonna change the fill to something that we can all see. Uh, very clearly like this cyan blue and then we're going to just create some squares i'm holding shift creating some squares i'm going to switch back to my move tool hold option or alt and duplicate that out and we're going to create three squares you can see the layers over here now i want this left square to be on top and this right square to be on bottom currently they're all the same color and we can't tell you know we can't see any depth there well i need to drag this layer to the top first off drag the middle guy to the middle, and then the bottom guy's on the bottom. You see that? They're just in sequential order. That's how layers work. The uppermost layer is the topmost element. Okay, how do I add a drop shadow? Two things I can do. I can either double click in this sort of blank space to the right of the layer name. So if I double click, it's gonna open up the layer styles. Cool, I could find drop shadow and apply it there. The other way to do it, if you're used to it, is to click the FX button down here, find drop shadow and go there. It's gonna take you right to the drop shadow. It's even gonna add it. Now, if I have the preview box checked, I'm going to see the drop shadow applied over here and we're gonna see all of our changes as we're making them. So let's start from top to bottom. We have a color. We can adjust and turn this into any color that we want. Multiply is the blending mode it starts on. That's the default. That's because multiply is very helpful for making that shadow blend into the background. If you're blending it into a photo, putting text on top of a photo or something, it's helpful if you're using different colors. Uh, it, it Multiply is a great blending mode for that. Now obviously you can choose any other blending mode you want, but you also have opacity. Opacity is the transparency of the overall drop shadow. Uh, this is one of those things that you kind of tweak a little bit and then you come back to it and maybe adjust it some more so it's not too overpowering. Obviously 100% most of the time is a little too much. We're gonna bring this down some. Actually, we'll bring it up so you guys can see the next changes. So global light is, is, uh, is the global angle of your entire document. So as long as this is checked, it'll use the same angle for any other element that you have uh, global light checked in a drop shadow adjustment. So I can adjust the global angle and any other object that has that is gonna adjust at the same time. Uh, we can also uncheck that if you want to change the angle. Most of the time your light source is coming from one direction, so you use that global light button. It's kind of a default thing. Uh, the distance changes the distance our shadow is from our object. The spread, I like to think of it a little bit like the power of it or the contrast of it. And then the size will adjust pretty much the feathering or the softness. However, if you turn the spread up, it's gonna increase that contrast and really push it out to the edges to the point that you get some very sharp corners on that drop shadow. I tend to keep these pretty low and uh, you know you want that spread. We don't want the distance to be too much out there. Uh, you know, just kind of trying to not have this be so overpowering. One other quick trick for the distance, you can actually come out here and just click and move this around. It's going to change the angle and change the distance. So if you wanted to really just sort of position the shadow in a certain spot, you can do that just by clicking and dragging it. The quality is the sort of shape of our, like the contour of our drop shadow. Anti-aliasing is down here. You can also adjust the noise of the drop shadow. Notice how it gets very pixelated and grungy looking. Uh, and then layer knocks out the drop shadow is another uh, option down here. These down here don't use so much. Up here, this I use 99.9% uh, .9 of the time when I'm adjusting drop shadows. So for this one, what I wouldn't want to do is bring that back a little bit, uh, turn the opacity pretty far down, uh, maybe adjust the angle slightly, and potentially adjust the spread and the size. So I just want a little bit of a drop shadow on this guy, just enough to separate him from the next element. I'm gonna hit okay, and there he is. He's applied underneath here. If you don't see him, just toggle this arrow down. That's where all your layer styles are. Now to uh, copy this to the other guys, without redoing it, I can just hold Alt or Option, click and drag on that layer style, and drop him on the next rectangle. 
Same thing with the rectangle below it. Can keep holding that button and just drop it on each one. There we go, we have the drop shadow applied to each of these. Now if you came here to uh, figure out how to do the thumbnail image, let me show you how to do that because drop shadows, I'm gonna shift click this, hit the delete key. Drop shadows can be applied on any type of layer. So I could even grab a text layer, come out here and type something like the word drop shadow. It's in white, I selected white, I'm gonna hit okay on that. And notice the background's white, we can't see this word one bit. Well, drop shadows to the rescue. Command or Control T, I'm gonna scale this up to this size, hit return, there we go. So drop shadows sitting in there. We're gonna double click on this, that's my favorite way to get to the layer styles. I'm gonna add a drop shadow, and there it is, boom. We have our drop shadow applied. It has all the elements from the, la or all the adjustments from the last set of properties that we adjusted. So I'm gonna keep those, hit okay. And there we go. That is how you can even bring elements that are completely the same color as the background. You can pop them out. Uh, drop shadows are, they're very, very awesome to use. They're great elements in your design. They can be overpowering at times. So strategy wise, what I would do is wherever you sort of push it, maybe pull it back a little bit, or if you're not used to the feel of design and the feel of what could be overpowering yet, because I even am looking at this and thinking it's a little bit too much, you can actually do all your work, get the drop shadows and things to where you want them, and then step away from your project. Come back to it the next day and really look at it with a fresh set of eyes and figure out, okay, does that does that drop shadow look like it's a little too much? You know, Do I need to pull that opacity back a little bit or that the size of that or maybe the distance is too much? And start to tweak that some. Because they can be really cool, minimal, clean type of design elements. They can be very helpful in, especially when you're doing like white text on an image to get it to pop just a little bit more, but subtly. You want this thing to be subtle. You want it to serve a purpose, but not be a really overpowering element itself. I hope you guys learned a lot in this tutorial. Hit that like button if you did. Make sure you subscribe for more tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.